Hi developers, I'm Hussam Dillai, Microsoft MVP. In this video, I'll try to explain to you how Kubernetes works. So when we talk about Kubernetes, we are talking about running containers. And we'll run those containers on virtual machines or physical servers. For that, at the bottom architecture of Kubernetes cluster, we'll have different virtual machines. So let's say we have here one uh, virtual machine here. And we'll have another one and a third one. And virtual machine or those physical clusters and the Kubernetes um, uh, object, they are called the nodes. So we'll have here the node number one and node number two and node number three. We can also have some other uh, nodes running in our uh, cluster. We can have um, um, the number of the nodes that we want. And each of those nodes will have the container runtime running. So this one will have container runtime because at the end, we want to run a Docker container on those um, nodes. And the same here, we have also container runtime running. And from here, we can run our Docker containers inside those different nodes. That we can do that manually. So we connect to each node, then we run the commands docker run the container. And with this, we can have different containers deployed on those different nodes. But what, what should I do when one of those containers um, uh, crashes or one of those nodes crashes? So I don't want to fix this um, manually because that's not fun to do. And here where Kubernetes comes into play. So with Kubernetes, we'll have another virtual machine or a physical server called the master. That one will try to make sure that my containers and my configuration is always up and running. So we'll have another uh, node here called the uh, master. So let's run that here. So it could be called the master or also called the um, control plane. And this is the brain of Kubernetes because from here it will issue commands in order to uh, control running all of those uh, different um, nodes. For our developers to run their configuration, we'll have here our uh, happy developer who is uh, working on the YAML of Kubernetes manifest uh, files, those uh, YAML. They contain the configuration of the different uh, containers that we want to run. For example, here we will say we want to, uh, we want to run, for example, uh, 20 uh, container. And this configuration will be passed to the control plane through the kubectl. So from here, uh, we'll have the deployment right here through using a uh, kubectl kubectl is the command line used by the developers in order to um, run the YAML configuration into the cluster. So when the control plane will receive this request from the uh, developer, or actually here this should be my uh, developer, not my user, so developer. When the control plane will receive that request, it will try to run it against it, the different nodes. So we'll have a component here that will uh, get that uh, request which is here the cube uh, the api server so we'll have the api server sitting right here its role is to get the uh, configuration then before running that configuration into those different nodes it will check against the current state of the cluster maybe i have those 20 containers already running here so it doesn't make sense to uh, rerun that configuration it will it we'll get that configuration from another component, which is the etcd. The etcd is like the database for the Kubernetes configuration. So the API server will talk to the etcd in order to get the current state of the cluster. Then when it finds that it really needs to create those 20 containers, it will go through the uh, API manager or the controller manager.
and also through the scheduler or the cube scheduler this scheduler here is um, the one that, that will be responsible for uh, deploying the containers onto those um, different nodes so it will check that it will see that here I need to run 20 containers here so it will say uh, for example I have enough space in my node number one so I'll go to create here let's say five uh, containers maybe so I'll have one docker container here then another one running against it another docker here and so on maybe here at the uh, I have five uh, containers uh, running and in the second node because maybe I have uh, already some other docker containers uh, running I don't have as much space as the first uh, node so maybe here I can only uh, deploy let's say three docker containers so let's say here we'll have uh, three five and at the node number three we have enough space to run more containers here maybe you have a uh, space to run the remaining uh, 12 uh, containers so at the end we'll have this configuration running on our uh, cluster now what about our users who want to connect to my application my users now will connect to the app uh, not through the um, control plane or through the master but through the worker nodes so I'll we'll have here our uh, users they will connect through their browser the HTTP and so on and they will uh, they will be routed to those different uh, nodes but they won't access directly the node but they will pass maybe through a load balancer for that we'll have here another component called load balancer and through the load balancer we can tell uh, or we can redirect the user to the node 1, node 2 or the node number 3 uh, the load balancer here um, could be created by cloud provider if our cluster lives inside the cloud provider for actually for this cluster we can create it uh, manually on premise and we can also use a managed uh, cluster on the cloud and we have here the three main cloud providers uh, Azure, uh, Google and Amazon both they have uh, different uh, offers for managed Kubernetes clusters so for Azure for example uh, they have the thing called AKS Azure Kubernetes Service for uh, Amazon they have Elastic Kubernetes Service and for uh, uh, Google they have Google Kubernetes Engine and all of those three they offer those managed services and more than that they offer uh, an integration between the Kubernetes cluster and the other th services they offer like their databases their managed disks their load balancers and so on and here Kubernetes might ask those different cloud providers to give him more uh, resources to use for example here the load balancer it could be um, created or uh, requested by Kubernetes from those different cloud providers and here we have another uh, component living inside the uh, master which is here the cloud manager so the cloud manager is the component that will talk to the uh, cloud provider to ask him to uh, give him a disk to attach it to one of those nodes or to give him a database in order to uh, run some stateful uh, workloads and it could ask him also to give him more virtual machines because here if uh, then I'm asking to run 100 containers of my application on the cluster maybe those three virtual machines are not enough so through the cloud uh, Kubernetes might ask to add uh, to provision a new virtual machines to scale out the cluster so it could run any number of uh, containers that we want. I hope this explanation was simple and helpful for you. So thank you. Yes, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. My handler is at Hussam Delay.